Konisti, how are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast. This is another entry into our series on waterways in Ireland and their mythic roots. This is the story of the Shannon and its origin, carved by the Kerthonach as she fled from St. Patrick. This podcast is brought to you with support from our patrons over at Patreon. You can join them at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales or you can make a one-time donation to our PayPal. You can like, follow and subscribe. You can do all of those things to support us or you can just listen while Aaron tells us a story. My mam told me this story once. A long time ago about hot embers, mists, darkness, hellfire and molten flame rolling off her back as she curled herself out of embers. She seemed to be in a world where there was only fog and darkness, sharp edges and no round corners. She was there before anything and there to see all the things that came after her. Before her, she said, there was just blackness. But there was a spark then. And from the spark, an ignition of all forms of life came to being. From the fire, from the flames. And as she'd always say, with flame there's desire. But she couldn't put that desire in anybody's heart until man came along. The creatures were not as susceptible. Every creature and being and beast out to fend for themselves, only to feed and gorge themselves full. Well, that was animalistic and tribal and awful and bloody and brilliant in many ways. Or so my mother used to say. I was one of many that she gave birth to. Many beings, many serpentile, agile, slithering creatures, pastes they often called us. Demons, demonic spirits and the like. There were other beasts and creatures that did not survive when mankind went to the high places. When they went up high and took the lands and away from the waterways and the islands that were submerged under the waters of the sea that was engulfed when the mountains moved. My mother saw those things change and she slithered and slipped and slid around those and saw in the heart of mankind their demise. Although they strived for survival, there would be a way to bring them down to their knees. And this is how she found her way of pleasing herself, I suppose. <laughs> My mother, the mother of all of the demons, devils, snakes they were called, but that was just a way of moving in between, slithering and sliding like most pastes, but my mother, she desired destruction above all else. She loved pestilence, pervasiveness, to stick at something, you know, really hard, like a plague. <laughs> Giving that through and through until ten score would be brought down, more even. Plagues, famine, destruction, death, war. These were all things my mother had a hand in. Oftentimes, whispering sweet things into the ears of her listeners, just to strike up a bit of strife and mischief in amongst those people who had the heart for desiring power or well, belonging over another. It was all well and good when the island was crowded by many who seemed to want dominion over others in the north, in the west, in the south, east, the flatlands. Well, there was all tribal warfare for quite a time when 
They eventually erected monuments and stones and began to call the godlike beings. And those godlike beings were terrible, destructive, fast, slight, tall, thin, pale, slick, and agile. The two are they, Darren. They were the hardest to face. They were the most brilliant, fantastic movers, creators of a magic we had, not an ability to fight really, although we did our best. Every pace does do their best, I suppose. Shapeshifters are like, hmm, you have to accept a certain amount of gratitude when you're given a foe that you can really face on multiple planes and different faces and guises. But they'd always fight us off and leave us licking our wounds, whether they were fighting a paste in the middle of the Shannon or a great lake. We preferred to stay by the waterways. Most days. But then the changing of the tides, when well, it came and it went, slippering and slithering and change always. Although we got on quite well by being left in between the fighting and destruction. Didn't always work out that way. And when the sons of Mill, they came and the rest went under hill across the Vale. Well, this was our dominion too. But there were gateways known to us, not others. Gateways where we could get back down the dark, dark, deep depth. My mother, you'd always say, best to lurk in the dark, deep depths and come out once in a while just to see what's going on. <laughs> My mother was wise, although she didn't expect everybody to become so <sighs> holy. All one faith, all one thought, all one congregation together for such a long time. It was kind of boring, really, but I suppose it was all his fault, the Roman fella. Lord, he was, but when he was captured as a young fella and brought over to Ireland's shores, none of us thought anything of him at that stage. He was just a simple servant, a slave caught from one of the many ships that go out to the east capture slaves in that coast of the bigger island. Well, it didn't work out very well for us in this stage because he brought a power back that we couldn't quite understand. Faith is a strange thing. The people before, the shapeshifters, the gods who have powers over those of the Fomorians, Godlike people, I should say. Yeah, they had a power where they could stand on one leg, hold a hand behind their back and place a massive force upon waves calling up whirlwinds. But at least we could fight that with brawn and strength and spit fire and venom. Not these holy folk. No, it is all Patricius's fault. That was his first name, of course. Patroclus. Yeah, one of those. Paddy he became, of course. Not before Patrick and he meeting Sheila was the next thing, of course. He had his dreams. He escaped his slavery. He came back with a life of study filled, studying old books in Europe. But when he came back, he did a very smart thing. He decided to strip away the tribal warfare from everyone, the, the gluttonous, lovely, fueling, filled force that we loved so much, stripped away in an instant because he went to the kings and he sought peace to be gotten between them. Well, it was the very first time in Ireland we'd ever heard of such a thing. Huh. Peace between neighbors characteristic of the island really not very fun for the page the demons and those who wait in the shadows my mother had very little 
uh, appreciation for this, content mostly. And so we bided our time waiting for this demise of this strange character to come about. Sure enough, my mother would plant a seed and it would come to fruition. Uh, downfall, no doubt. But then he went to Cropatra. We didn't expect what he did then, you see, because he called forth a power none of us had any awareness of. This druid-like man, this godlike being, all of a sudden called down a power from a sense and a source we didn't really know was there. It was more powerful than the flames that were cooking hot in the centre of this globe just before everything burst forth it was maybe the same that he tapped into that eternal power that's the centre of things and well, when he called down that power it was flame, flame again he lit the fires on Cropatric uh, yeah. calling in the summer calling in the heat calling away the darkness calling out my brothers and sisters from their lairs calling them to face him in the light, in the dark. They wanted to stay in the bright, fire-filled light with his sword flashing bright. He swept them around and called up a great wind that blew everyone out into the ocean, away from the waterways and isles and gateways to the other world that we kept on so safely for ourselves. No. He managed to blow every one of the pastes out. I clung on desperately. Just about. I was weak. I couldn't fight. I couldn't near face him standing so brave and tall and strong. I slithered and crept and looked and waited. Where was she, my mother, the mother of all of the devils? The mother of all the demons. Where was Mummy now? Well, she rose her head and she snarled, a terrible snarl. Oh, I thought he was done for then. <laughs> she craned up as tall as a tree. Her serpentine head slithering and flicking, knocking trees down with her tail. Her teeth were like swords, scales like shields. I was sure that Patroclus was done for now. Sheila, his wife, well, she shrieked utterly, but he called down some more power, and his blade seemed to ring out and shine bright. He picked up his shield and faced Care Tarnock. I watched in amazement. One huge serpentine demon, the mother of all demons herself, fighting this man, one man standing on the top of Crow Patrick, all there to see this demonic fight take place on the hills overlooking the west, splashed with islands flickering about the foams and the waves as the water crashed and the wind lashed. They fought for three long days and three long nights. They fought in the light, the bright and the dark and the depths of this night. They fell into a blood-soaked fury with the fighting not ending. And still, he managed to keep fighting. He managed to keep going, somehow drawing power and strength from something, I don't know what. My mother, eventually, blood soaked and shrieking, turned and ran to the amazement, to my amazement, my shock. And she barreled away up, well, north, I suppose, to the crook in the corner there. Tullan is the name of the town now in Leitrim, just by the sea there. And she crept along and she kept on spitting into the, well, the, the waterways. Because it was Patrick on the horseback following after her that couldn't quench his thirst. And though he had a desperate thirst, although it was a brilliant thing she did, she spat in every single one of the waterways. So he couldn't quench his thirst. And it was a long road she was slithering along. Oh, he couldn't quench a thirst that came about him so badly. He was rasping, praying to some otherworldly being to quench his thirst. Till his horse kicked him off. 
landed sharply in a rock, and there I saw it with my own eyes. A spring well popped up where he hit his head in the ground. Well, he devoured the water then. Restored with some strength, some, dare I say it, faith. He picked up his sword and went on, away from the coast, now following the slippery, sliding way. The track dug into the ground by this great, slithering body of Kertanok, the mother of all the demons, and she was going back to the gateway, back down to the dark depths of Loch Derg, before it got that name, I suppose. There was an island. In this island, there was a gateway, straight down, 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 in the small cave. And in there you could creep into the hell fire of the other world. Restore her strength, come back, renewed she would. I knew she would, I would follow. But still I could keep my eye in this Patrick, Paddy, Patrickless. He was gaining upon her and when she got to the lake, the water edge, she knew he could fling a sword at her so she turned to face him once more but she was weak she wasn't ready she needed to restore her strength and Patrick had been restored from this little bit of water he'd prayed for and well I looked away he ran her through his sword cutting straight in the middle right down her belly to her throat she fell almost in two pieces, into the water, blood red oozing out amongst the water, turning the entire lake a filthy, dark, dirty red. Everyone shrieked and gasped to see it, claiming the name now would be the Red Lake, Loch Derg. <laughs> she fell into the water and no Nobody could find her body. Nobody to be found. Her essence was there in the water and the blood. I slithered and crept, and brothers and sisters of mine who had just clung on, well, we crept down to the hellfire, into the gateway between worlds, on that little island in Loch Derg. <sighs> They built a monastery in the 17th century. <laughs> they even covered up the cave. <laughs> As if that would do anything. We stayed. We've waited and watched. Many a time we've poked our head out as our mother would tell us to do. Always waiting for a chance. For a chance to cause destruction, disharmony, strife. We're alive with strife. Mammy, it's time to get up now. There's work to be done.